Spokane, Portland, and Seattle, number 700, is the oldest and only surviving example of the Class E1 484 Northern type steam locomotive and the only surviving original, and by that I mean not purchased, used from another railroad, Spokane, Portland, and Seattle railway steam locomotive. In other words, she's unique in a lot of ways and was originally constructed by Baldwin in May of 1938. The E1s were very, very, very similar, and by that I mean nearly identical, to the A3 Northerns that were built for Northern Pacific, but the E1s burned oil instead of coal. Spokane, Portland, and Seattle had spent a long time running secondhand equipment. And they were getting frustrated by that. They asked their parent companies, Great Northern and Northern Pacific, to please, please let them purchase new locomotives. They were permitted to do this, and the new locomotive purchases included three of the E1s, 700 and her sisters, 701 and 702. They also got six Z6 class Challenger locomotives, four 664s, for use in freight service. 700 was delivered to the railway on June 21st, 1938, and she, along with her sister 702, would pull overnight passenger trains between Spokane and Vancouver, Washington, along the north shore of the Columbia River. 701 would provide backup and pull freight when needed. However, they couldn't reach Portland until 1944, due to the fact there was an undersized turntable. They're northerns, they're pretty big, and the turntable just couldn't accommodate them. Her career was not without its incidents, however. In 1938, during her initial trial run, she stopped in front of a rock slide that was blocking the tracks. That wasn't a big deal, but right after the rocks were cleared, a secondary slide occurred and struck her, damaging her trailing truck, but otherwise being a minor inconvenience, and it wasn't like that was her fault at all. However, on March 25th, 1947, while pulling a passenger train in Washington, she had a much, much worse accident. She suffered a derailment near Snake River after hitting a another rock slide. They, they have those often enough to be obnoxious in Washington, just so we're clear. And she hit this one at 45 miles per hour. This would throw her off the rails, and she would slide down the bank, toppling onto her left side. Incredibly, her engineer, fireman, and leading brakeman all escaped with only minor injuries. She herself was also recovered and sent to the shops for repairs, and continued her career. That same year, the Great Northern Railway had actually begun to streamline their premier passenger train, the Empire Builder, and had started adding diesels to their roster. Spokane, Portland, and Seattle would also begin purchasing diesels at about that time, but they received the new locomotives after they received the streamlined cars. So, the 700 sisters would pull those streamlined coaches for some time. And into the early 50s, they started pulling secondary passenger trains. But by 1954, the diesels had completely replaced them for passenger service. So the E1 settled into pulling freight trains until 1955. Just the following year, on May 20th, 1956, a dolled up number 700, with her smoke box painted a brilliant silver, pulled her last passenger train. The farewell to steam run had a total of 21 cars carrying 1,400 passengers from Portland, Oregon to Wishram, Washington, and back again. After this, she, her sisters, and her cousins were all sent to the scrap line. This, of course, could have spelled the end for her, but fate would intervene. Not because of anything Spokane, Portland, and Seattle were planning to do initially. They really were intending to scrap all their steam locomotives. But while this was going on, Union Pacific, which has a history of being much better about donating their steam locomotives, was offering to donate a steam locomotive to the city of Portland, Oregon. SPNS did not want to be outdone by one of their competitors, so they in turn offered to send 700, as she was the one that was the most dolled up compared to her sisters, and Portland did accept. 700 was sent to them on January 14th, 1958, and she would be placed in Oaks Pioneer Park, near Oaks Park, along the Willamette River, along with another locomotive, Oregon Railroad and Navigation Company number 197, and the pair would be later joined by Southern Pacific 
4449. Oh yes, these are the three stepsisters of Oaks Park. If you've seen my video on 4449, you know we've been here before. By 1960, 700 had lost both of her sisters, and she was one of only two Spokane, Portland, and Seattle steam locomotives to survive. The other one was a 282, number 539, but she was originally built for Northern Pacific, numbered 1762. So as I said, number 700 is the only original Spokane, Portland, Seattle steam locomotive left. Park engines can be a very good idea and a very bad idea. On paper, they do allow these old locomotives to survive a lot longer than if they were just sent for scrap, but being in a park, especially not under any kind of shelter, does expose them to the elements, and time takes a toll. Rust, decay, and even vandalism plagued all three locomotives. They were only protected by a chain-link fence. They probably would have fallen apart into a state of complete disrepair if not for the efforts of a single Southern Pacific Railroad employee who also happened to be a member of the Pacific Northwest chapter of the National Railway Historical Society, Jack Holst. We mentioned him when we talked about 4449. Mr. Holst would regularly visit all three locomotives and kept their bearings and rods well greased and oiled, just in case any of them ever got the chance to move again. Sadly, he would pass away in 1972, before the first stepsister of Oaks Park, 4449, was removed after she was looked at to pull the American Freedom Train. When they discovered how well kept her bearings and rods had been, they realized she'd be a perfect choice, and she was swiftly taken from the site to pull it, leaving 700 and 197. But their story didn't end there. In 1975, a 15-year-old boy named Chris McLarney took it upon himself to start working on 700, cleaning and oiling her components, as Jack Holst once did. He would found the PRPA, or Pacific Railroad Preservation Association, in 1977, in an effort to provide support for the preservation work on the locomotive. And 10 years later, on November 9th, 1987, 700 was finally moved from Oaks Park to Southern Pacific's Brooklyn Roundhouse in Southeast Portland, for the restoration work to be continued. With the support of many individuals, as well as the Burlington Northern Railroad, number 700 was finally put back into operation on May 15th, 1990. Now running a big Northern like 700 definitely comes with its share of difficulties. She's large and powerful, and therefore there's only a handful of places you can safely run her. Plus she's expensive, both in terms of the fuel she needs and the insurance involved, but she has still seen a decent amount of excursions over the years since 1990, including a double header with her stepsister, 4449, from Portland to Wishram, Washington, and back during the 2005 National Railway Historical Society National Convention, as well as the 2002 Steam Across Montana from Sandpoint, Idaho to Billings, Montana, and back again. In the spring of 2001, she would run a special excursion called the Homecoming Excursion that ran over the original Spokane, Portland, and Seattle mainline through the Columbia River Gorge and lasted four days from Portland all the way to Spokane, Washington. And 700 would solo this train pretty much the entire trip, though at one point she suffered some mechanical issues and BNSF 6308, an EMD SD40-2, was pulled from the train she was helping with and assisted 700. That excursion actually ended a little early though, as a result of a derailment between the tool car and the power car. It involved the lead trucks on the power car, but again, that wasn't 700's fault. And she would actually be added to the National Register of Historic Places on January 25th, 2006, as the Spokane, Portland, and Seattle Railway steam locomotive. Up until June of 2012, 700, alongside both her stepsisters, 4449 and 197, called the Union Pacific Brooklyn Roundhouse their home. The city of Portland themselves were leasing the roundhouse for this purpose, but after Union Pacific announced plans to demolish it to allow for the expansion of their yard, they needed to find a new place to hold these engines. 
So the Oregon Rail Heritage Foundation, with support from the city of Portland, managed to raise funds for a new restoration and visitor center that was down the street from the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry to provide the steam locomotives with a permanent and publicly accessible home before the closure of the roundhouse. Construction of the Oregon Rail Heritage Center began in October 2011, and 700 and her stepsisters, as well as the other rail equipment, was moved to the site of the new engine house and heritage center on June 26, 2012. They removed indoors on July 28th, once the engine house was fully enclosed, and it opened to the public on September 22nd, 2012. This facility is arguably the best place to have a steam locomotive currently in the modern day in America. Fully enclosed, climate controlled, this is the lap of luxury for a preserved steam locomotive. 700 and her stepsisters do not have to worry about anything happening to them in this place. And the Heritage Foundation takes very good care of them. Maintenance of 700 in particular continues to be carried out by the Pacific Railroad Preservation Association and a team of volunteers. She did have to be taken out of service in 2015, however, for her 1,472-day inspection as mandated by the Federal Railroad Administration, or FRA. Since then, dedicated volunteers have been working on her to put her back under steam again. In August 2020, the Emory Trust awarded a grant of 35000 to help complete her rebuild. And in March of 2023, the Emory Trust again gave a grant of 10500 At the moment, it's hoped that she'll be back up to steam this year, 2024. Although what isn't clear is where she would run. See, in the past, generally, 700 as well as 4449 would run their yearly short excursions on the Oregon Pacific Railroad, a short line route just nearby. But in 2022, they introduced new restrictions on these big northerns. Basically, they were damaging their lines, which is understandable. And that prevents 700 and her stepsister from running on the railroad through to Oaks Park for the foreseeable future. It's not known where they can even put her or runner at all, and it kind of makes them a little bit stranded out there. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are perfectly safe. Nothing is going to happen to them in this facility. They are well taken care of, frequently inspected, they are in the best of hands, but in terms of running, it's difficult in the modern day, especially with new rules in place in America, to actually find places to accept these locomotives. Normally a short line route would be great, as they tend to be more lenient towards the idea, but Orchid Pacific, lately under the new management, just hasn't been keen, and it's restricted 4449 as well as number 700 from operating. But they're still going to put her back under steam anyway, and I am certain they will find a place where they can run her. Because she's one of a kind, and she's a fan favorite, even sitting next to her bright and colorful stepsister. She also has multiple nicknames. She's dubbed the Lady, or the First Lady of the Northwest, as well as the Night Princess. I love it! Fantastic! Whoever came up with that name, you are awesome! And in any event, she's not going anywhere. And regardless of how often she's able to run, she will be able to be seen and appreciated for years to come. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders, some do 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune 131-232, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Brian, Jack Carson's Rare Videos, Lord Off 444, Murder Drones Doll, A Person 723, Royal Hunter 2860, Isaac for 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Red Lion, NS Productions 8104, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Wheeljack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, Dub Baxter, Caleb Crosswhite, Ohio Trucker 1, Andrew Bowen, Josh Johnson, Hayden DeGrow, Kayla Brainwaters, Prez Dredson, Master of None, The Oklahoma Hot Rail, Liam Wright, Mr. Sleepy, Travis Zielinski, Jared Brussel, Joshua Long, Hannah Bird, Amtrak 2024 Productions, Tommy Rossini, That Guy with a Beard, and Ben McCullough. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.